Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about Ghost and how to fight with her most effectively. Now, the structure of this video, I'm going to have time codes in the description as well as on the timeline so that you can navigate this video easily. You can go right to the section that interests you the most so you don't have to watch this video from beginning to end. I'm hoping to make this video more of a guide or a reference uh, for fighting with Ghost. Now, maybe you just got Ghost or you just got around to ranking her up and you want to learn how to fight with her a little bit better. Well, hopefully this video will help you out. Now, throughout the video, as I'm talking about different things uh, pertaining to Ghost, I will have a gameplay that you can see what I'm talking about, uh, an example on the uh, screen here. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's start with a very, very brief history of Ghost. So when Ghost first came into the contest, most of us did not know how good she was. We read about her abilities on paper, but it didn't translate into just how versatile she is. And Pandaman Peep, who is another MCOC uh, player and a YouTuber, uh, he has his own channel, he showed us the way. And he was the first to basically showcase gameplay with Ghost that showed just what a beast she actually was. So that brings me to my first point. Ghost is the most versatile champion in this game. In my opinion, that puts her well above so many other champions. Now, I'm not one to do tier lists. I don't think of champions that way. Uh, but Ghost is a tool just like all the rest of the champions, but she is a multi-purpose tool. She can solve so many different problems and situations and that makes her, in my opinion, one of the most versatile champions in the game. Uh, there is no one way to play Ghost. That's something that I heard from some of the pro Ghost players when I was just starting with Ghost. Because you hear a lot about a certain way to play Ghost. Uh, I've talked to people and they're like, oh yeah, you never want to do more than a one-hit combo. That's not true. Uh, you box yourself in if you limit yourself to one particular play style with Ghost. And we'll talk a little bit about them. Uh, we're not going to go into every single situation Ghost is great for, but we're going to try to hit some of the more common ones. Okay, now if you run Suicides... And if you don't know what suicides are, they are liquid courage and double edge masteries. If you run them, Ghost is insane. She is awesome without suicides, but if you want to see how impressive she can be with her damage, you need to run suicides. I did not run suicides full time until I got Corvus and then Ghost. Because using them most of the time, my suicides do not bother me at all. And we'll talk a little bit about what makes her so suicide friendly in a, a little bit here. So let's cover some basics with Ghost. And we're not going to go in depth into her abilities, but in order for you to get the most out of some of the later discussions, you should be familiar at least with some of these. The first one is her phasing ability. So when you dash back with Ghost, you're going to phase for about two seconds. Now, if you have a precision buff, you're not going to phase. And if you are armor broken, you're not going to phase. You can also fail to phase if you're fighting someone that reduces your ability accuracy. I'm looking at you, Magneto. Or if a crit failure. I'm looking at you, Domino. So there are abilities that can cause you to fail to phase. Okay. And when you phase, you will get a precision 
buff. That buff gives you a guaranteed crit on your next attack. Okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more about that because it plays into a style that made Ghost just so awesome. Okay? Uh, now, with that precision buff, as I said, it gives you a guaranteed crit on your next attack. Ghosts cannot crit outside of her abilities. That will be important later. And she cannot be evaded when she crits. So a particular style will allow you to deal with anti, I mean, uh, deal with invaders, <laughs> invaders, deal with evaders uh, so that they will not evade. As long as you can just do crits, then they're not going to evade, okay? Now, her awakened ability, there is some debate. Some people do not think she is worth playing without being awakened. I disagree. I've played with her awakened and not awakened. I've played with her with a high sig and without a high sig. She is worth playing regardless. Her awakened ability gives her a little bit more power management. You know, um, if you phase and she's awakened and they attack you, it's a guaranteed miss unless they have some mechanic to prevent it. And you will gain power. 5% of your maximum power every time they miss you. And that is at max sig. That is significant, and it does make a big difference, but she does not need to be awakened. But if you have a tech gem, I would say use that on her. She's worth it. And if you are planning to play her a lot, and you have a lot of sig stones, then she's worth a generic as well. Now, she also starts the fight phased. That is a convenience. Very, very convenient. But even if she is not awakened, all that means is that you have to dash back. But the power gain on them missing is the important thing with her awakened ability. So let's go over some of her synergies. The three main synergies are with Wasp, the Hood, and Ant-Man. You don't always see the Ant-Man synergy. It gives her uh, more damage per buff, 15% more attack per buff. But the one that you're likely to see the most is Wasp. And that's because it changes your playstyle. So if you watch a video, and you'll see a video here where she is phasing, and then her special is unblockable, and she attacks into their block and just wrecks them, that is what Wasp does. So when you have the Wasp synergy, you can just phase, attack with a special. You don't care whether they're blocking or not. That is what Wasp does. And a lot of people think that the Wasp synergy is the more important one. I disagree, but that's mainly because I run suicides. The Hood synergy, on the other hand, you cannot play around it with the wasp if you don't have wasp and i've played with ghost without wasp or the hood you can play around without having wasp okay and we'll talk about what you need to do when you don't have wasp on your team but with the hood you do not take any damage while phased you can't change your play style for that so for me the more important one is the hood synergy. Now, that hood synergy allows you to avoid recoil damage. We'll talk more about that later. You can tank special threes, and you can handle nodes where, that uh, cause degeneration damage. Now, one node is the no retreat node. She is good for that. That's one of the nodes that she cannot do without the hood. But with the hood, she can do it. Now, there used to be one called um, Slash Tires. They've removed that, I believe, from the game. I haven't seen it in a long time. But if that had been still in the game, it was where you dash back and you took damage. 
but with the hood, she wouldn't have taken damage on that node either. Okay, so you uh, saw the video, hopefully, uh, where you can tank a special three. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more later, like I said, um, about avoiding the recoil damage as well. Okay, so earlier I said that there are, is no one way to play Ghost. And we're going to talk a little bit about different ways, different combos that you can use with Ghost and why you might want to use the different combos. So first up is the one hit combo. And this can be very, very useful. You want to use this when you have Furies up, especially. You can use it anytime, but you want to do it when you have Furies up. Uh, you also want to do it if you're dealing with someone who evades, like Nightcrawler or Spider-Man Classic. You want to use the one-hit combo because, as I mentioned earlier, you dash back, phase, and then when you attack, you have that precision buff up. And that precision buff is a guaranteed crit, and they cannot evade the crit. So if all you're doing is one hit, one hit combos, they'll never evade you. If you mess up and try to do multiple hits, you risk having them evade uh, in the middle of your combo even. So the safe play if you're fighting a Nightcrawler, Spider-Man, uh, Classic, uh, or any of the other evaders, is to do one-hit combos. Now, the other situation that you may find the one-hit combo useful is if you're fighting against a champion that will put a debuff on you when you hit them. Now, Morningstar is one of the champions that come to mind that she will put a bleed debuff. She has a chance to put a bleed debuff every time you hit her. And also the biohazard node. Now, the reason that the one hit combo is so great here and why you really want to stick to it is if you, by any chance, get hit with the debuff on the first part of your special, for example, then you are going to take that damage all the way until your special is ended and you can phase it out. And I, that has happened to me so many times. So I've learned that when you're in that situation, just one hit combos, no specials, unless it's gonna be a special three. But other than that, no um, multiple hits. You can, you can hit multiple uh, combos, but it's dangerous. It's dangerous to do that. Much safer to do one hit. And since you're converting the uh, damage over time to a Fury, you're going to be doing a lot of damage with that one hit combo, even without firing off your special. So you want to stick to the one hit combo in those situations, but you don't have to. You can do a one, uh, two hit combo, three hit combo, phase it out um, and wreck them. Okay. So up to you, but she is that versatile. Uh, also, the one hit combo can be a type of power management because when you're hitting them with just one hit, you're doing crazy amounts of damage and they're not gaining a lot of power from those one hit combos. Try it out and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, the multi hit combo and talking to certain ghost players, they'll tell you, no, you never want to do multi hits. You don't want to do, you know, especially a five hit combo. But there are situations where you might want to do a multi hit combo. One is if you need to build up your combo for whatever reason, there may be some nodes where the higher your combo is, the more damage you are able to do. One node that I'm thinking of is breakthrough. Now that's not based on your combo meter, but the number of times you hit them. Every time you hit them, you're gonna uh, armor, uh, reduce their armor. I believe it's their armor. It might be their block proficiency, but in any case, you're going to be doing more damage the more hits you do. So in that case, you might wanna do a five hit combo because when you do finally fire off that special two, 
you'll do more damage. So that might be a situation where you want to use a multi-hit combo for Ghost. The other time you might want to use multi-hit uh, combos is if you are about to finish the fight. You know, you see them, they have, you know, maybe 30% of their health left, and you are one bar and maybe, you know, a sliver, you know, away from your special two. And one hit won't do it. And for whatever reason, you might be a little nervous about the fight. They may be uh, about to do something. Maybe a timer is on, like Plague Mine might be a, a node that you're dealing with. In those situations, then you want to, you know, get to your special two as fast as possible. Don't feel afraid to do a multi-hit combo. You want to stay versatile when you're playing Ghost and adapt to the situation. Uh, the other thing that is something that I don't really hear talked about, but this was advice that I got when I was first starting uh, to play Ghost. One of the reasons you might want to do multi-hit combos and alternate between the one hit, the two hit, and the three hit combos is if you're dealing with a semi-passive AI. So you've seen it before, I'm sure, where you're fighting and the AI just decides to turtle up in the corner. So you might hit them into their block, but you may not be able to hit their block. Maybe you're dealing with an explosive personality where you don't want to hit into their block. So you might want to bait them out and when you're hitting them, alternate your combos and that often will get the AI to be a little bit more aggressive. So you'll do a one hit combo, the next time you'll do a two hit combo, next time you'll do a one hit or a three hit combo and a lot of times the AI will be more aggressive when you do that. If you see yourself dealing with that passive AI. All right, so just a little tip on uh, when you might want to use the multi-hit combo style. The other reason is, and we'll talk more about this style later, uh, is if you wanted to build up your cruelties. Uh, when you are doing multi-hit combos, you're not getting the guaranteed crit. Remember, she cannot crit outside of her abilities. So the multi-hit combo, a lot of those are not going to be crits but you will have a chance to gain cruelties and that will make you hit much harder when you fire off that special two. So uh, that has its uses as well and we'll talk more about that uh, in a little bit here. So let's talk about her special attacks. Now the special attack one is not my favorite for several reasons. Uh, if you are not running suicides, I would still use it sparingly because it doesn't do as much damage as the special two. However, if you're about to end the fight and that special one will finish them off, then you fire it off because you could get wrecked in between the time that you um, got a special one ready and could build up to a special two. So if you're holding out on a special two, and that's something that I still have to work on myself, but if you're holding on to a special two, then you could get wrecked or you may have to eat a special that you didn't normally have to eat. So um, use the special one when you need to, um, especially if it's going to end the fight. The special two, however, is where you get the big damage. That is the one that you want to fire off all the time if you can help it you know you know you have special situations where uh you may not want to do that and we'll talk about that as well but for the most part you want to fire off your special too now we'll talk about how to avoid the recoil damage but just briefly your special two not the special one is what you want to use if you're running suicides in order to avoid the recoil damage if you're playing with the hood on your team. Then you want to do the special two, not the special one. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Now the special three, you don't hear a lot of ghost players talk about building up to a special three. And that is because 
you get better damage output cycling those special twos. But there are situations where you might want to cycle your special three. And again, we will talk about that later. But what happens with the special three? If you build up your cruelty buffs, and remember, if you're doing multi-hit combos, you can do that. Um, another way is to fire off heavy attacks. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but if you have cruelty buffs and you fire off a special three, it will convert all of the cruelty buffs up to five into permanent passive cruelty buffs. So if you can build up to five and then fire off your special three, you're set. You don't need to do that again. That is a technique that some people uh, have used. Uh, I don't think it is as effective, uh, but it might be because I run suicides. If you're not running suicides, maybe we need to do some testing, uh, but I don't think it yields the most damage if you do it that way. But it is a valid technique, and there are situations that you're going to want to use that technique in the fight or else you're not going to be finishing the fight. Heavy attacks are another way to build up your furies. Okay, now the longer you hold your heavy, the longer you charge it up, the more of a chance you have to gain that fury. So you have a 50% chance to gain a fury. And if you hold it as long as you can, especially if they're stunned, then you have a better chance to gain that fury. Now, when you want to use heavy attacks, if you accidentally parried, because you really don't want to be parrying with Ghost. If you're playing Ghost the way she needs to be played, you don't parry at all. But there are times where you're dashing back or the AI time their attack just right. And it's going to end when your phase ends. Then you might want to block and parry and then fire off a heavy uh, or you can just back away if you you know don't want to do that okay you can also counter heavies with heavies and the more you can build up those furies the more damage your special two is going to do all right so when you have suicides early on and i mentioned this earlier uh you start phased if you are awakened if you're not awakened, dash back. But you're going to get those furies. And that's when you want to do one-hit combos because you're going to do so much damage with the one-hit combo. So the more furies you can build up, because after that initial set of furies, it's still a valid strategy to build up the furies. So I made a video, and uh, I was fighting in Labyrinth of Legends with Ghost against Red Hulk. And I had a perfect fight, no hits, and I did a decent job, I thought, at getting Red Hulk down quickly with Ghost. Then I watched Panda Man Pete, and he used heavy attacks to build up his furies and then launched his specials. And even though uh, the video that I saw, which was one of his first ones that he did, um, even though he had gotten hit more than I did, he downed Red Hulk faster than I did. So this is an area where I need to practice and I need to uh, add to my repertoire uh, to use the heavy attacks to build the Furies so that I can do more damage. Um, because I'm running suicides, I'm already doing crazy amounts of damage, so I don't really notice it as much. But if you're not running suicides, you definitely want to look into this. And that corner heavy spam, I really need to practice that. Uh, I've watched people do it. And what you want to do is when they don't have a bar of power and you have them in the corner, you can just keep spamming your heavy if you have the timing down. Uh, you spam your heavy over and over until they have a bar of power. Because once they have a special ready, they're going to fire it off in your face, intercept you, it's not going to be a good time. 
Okay, so I said I was going to talk more about uh, how to play her awakened versus not awakened. All right, so as we mentioned before, when she's awakened, she will start the fight phased. Okay, if you're running suicides, that means you want to do one hit combos until those furies end. You're going to do so much more damage in that short time when you have those furies up that you'd be really doing yourself a disservice if you didn't. Now, that's when you're running suicides. Now, once those furies are gone, you can play the fight with, you know, one hit, two hit combos. But if you can build up furies, then you're going to be doing that big boy damage again. And you'll want to go back to one hit combos while you have the furies. So basically, when you have furies up, do one hit combos to maximize your damage. Uh, you may also want to let them attack you a little bit to build up your power. So when she's awakened, she gets that power gain, 5% at maximum sig. So your style should be to let them attack you a few times. That's when you don't have furies up. When you have furies up, do the one hit combo, but then when they're down, phase and let them attack you once, twice, whatever you're comfortable with, and you're gonna generate a lot more power. You're gonna get your special two faster and the fight will be over quicker. And it is a form of power control because while you're gaining power, they're not, okay? So that is what you want to do when you have her awakened. Now, if she's not awakened, she's not going to start the fight phased. So you just want to dash back. Okay. Um, I played her, as I mentioned, plenty of times when she was not awakened. And I just had to remember to dash back. In fact, when I awakened her, I had to unlearn that dash back in the beginning and learn to just stand there and take a, a couple of uh, hits. So uh, you just dash back in the beginning and there's no need to let them hit you while you're phased uh, because, or attack you while you're phased because you're not gonna be gaining any power uh, when she's not awakened. So you can do one hit, two hit combos, whatever you feel comfortable with. You know, your timing, you may want to let them swing at you twice and then attack. Other people, they're comfortable with letting them do once and then a, a quick attack at the end of it. So when she's not awakened, she is still a beast of a champion, still versatile, but you play her just slightly differently than when she's awakened. And there is a difference. There is a big difference uh, to playing her unawakened and awakened. All right, so let's talk about the different play styles that you can adopt when you have Wasp on the team and when you don't have Wasp on the team. Now, this is the synergy that gets the most hype. I've played Ghost without Wasp just fine, but it does take a different play style. So first of all, with Wasp, Wasp makes your specials unblockable. So what you wanna practice doing with Wasp on your team is phasing and firing off your special almost at the same time, but you definitely want to phase slightly before it and fire off that special. Now on Kit, who was one of the better ghost players that I had ever met, you know, Panda Man Pete also uh, the number one there, uh, but on Kit gave me some very valuable advice. If you watch some of my earlier videos, I had to learn. And one of the things that on Kit told me was to try and use my left thumb to dash back, I mean, uh, to hit the special and use my right thumb to dash back. So what I had been doing previously was trying to do everything with my left thumb. And you can do it if you're quick enough. I can do it now, uh, but it's just easier to do it the other way. So instead of trying to do left thumb, dash back, pick it up, hit the special, you instead, like this, you, Dash and hit the special, dash and hit the special, dash and hit the special, okay? And you want to practice that because when you do that, not only is it unblockable, but it's going to guarantee all of your attacks on that special 
every hit in that special will be crits. If you fire it off and you find out that only the first one crit and the other ones didn't, you got the timing wrong. But when you get that timing right, all of the hits should be guaranteed criticals. Okay, so practice that uh, over and over. Do not practice with uh, Winter Soldier in Realm of Legends. That AI, very bad, very passive, very unusual, not good for practicing Ghost. You want to take her out into the wild. That's another piece of advice that I received. Instead of just practicing with Ghost in Realm of Legends, go use her. And I believe I was doing Act 6 at the time. And I went in there, just started using her, and fell in love. All right, now, without Wasp, what can you do? Well, your specials are not going to be unblockable, so you don't want to fire it off just willy-nilly, you know, because if they block it, then you're going to probably get wrecked. So what you want to do is intercept or bait out their heavies. Now, there may be other techniques, but these are the two things that I used when I didn't have Wasp. So you might have to take some blocked hits. This is not your normal ghost gameplay with Wasp. So you'll uh, take some blocked hits, and then when they attack you, that's when you fire off your special, and you're good to go. You got your guaranteed crits. Same thing with the heavy attack. So if you're blocking, you just wait it out, and if they fire off a heavy, that's when you fire your special off. If, you're, if they're dashing at you, that's when you fire your special off, okay? That's what you can do when you don't have Wasp. So with or without Wasp is a change of play style, but you don't need to have the Wasp synergy in order to get those guaranteed crits and do the great damage that you see. Wasp just makes it so much easier because you don't have to worry about baiting them out uh, baiting heavies, baiting uh, uh, attacks. You don't have to worry about any of that, okay, with uh, Wasp on your team. But Ghost can be played very effectively without Wasp. Now we come to my favorite synergy, the Hood. Now, with the Hood, I mentioned earlier, you do not take any damage when you are phased, okay? That lets you tank special threes as long as you're phased when they do their special three. Uh, but one of the biggest things that I like is that you can avoid recoil damage. So this is for people who use suicides. And this, as I said earlier, we were going to talk more about what makes her so suicide friendly. It's partly because of this synergy. You know, yes, she can phase and convert the uh, Furies or convert her damage over time debuffs into Furies when she phases, but she can also avoid recoil damage when she has the hood on her team. So that's something that you want to practice. I watch so many videos and I practice trying to get that timing down because if you don't get the timing just right, you just take the recoil damage. But once you get that timing down, you're not taking any damage. You'll finish fights with 100% of your health because you're not even getting touched. Okay, so practice, it's worth it. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, you want to use the special two. I've tried the special one. It doesn't work. You don't have enough time. The special two is the only one that you can phase to avoid the recoil damage. So if you really want to avoid taking damage, you want to fire off the two or the three specials. If you fire the special one off, make sure it kills them or else you're going to take that recoil damage. Okay. Now, without Hood, unlike with the Wasp Synergy, you can't change your play style to make up for not having the Hood. Okay being immune to damage while you're phased you you either are or you're not okay so there's no playstyle change you can use to make up for what um the hood brings to the team 
Okay. But if you don't have the hood and you are running suicides, then you just want to make sure to finish the fight with specials or cycle your special threes. Now, I believe that's going to result in less damage, um, but still you can avoid taking damage by spi uh, cycling your special threes. Okay. And again, we're going to talk about um, a couple of opponents where you want to cycle special threes and not fire off special twos and special ones. So there are a few champions in the game that have these annoying double medium attacks. And they're very annoying for Ghost because the rhythm is different. Okay, I listed up a few there. Uh, we've got Domino, we've got Stealth Suit Spidey, we've got Drax, we've got Black Widow Deadly Origins. Uh, I'm probably forgetting some, but those are the main four that I can think of. And what you want to do is delay your attack. So when you do one hit um, combos or when you do two hit combos, you have a certain rhythm with most people. Okay, you dash back phase they attack and you attack immediately and a lot of times you want to attack as quickly as possible because if you don't you run the risk of them backing off or blocking you but with these champions especially you can't attack immediately you've got to dash back and wait just a little bit and then attack them after their double attack is over okay so bear that in mind if you have to fight uh any one of those uh champions that do the double medium attacks uh it's it's very annoying and you do need to practice it uh arena is great for practicing but you do need to uh, practice uh maybe with some duels getting that timing down so that when you encounter them you'll be able to handle yourself well. All right, so we've come to the end of the video, and I know a lot of you are breathing a sigh of relief, but we're gonna end the video with some gameplay against some of the more annoying opponents for Ghost. First up is Ebony Maw. So when Ebony Maw first came on the scene, I fought him with Ghost. I got wrecked. And I laughed my head off. I was like, really, Kabam? Really? This was a clear ghost counter. Hard. Uh, I was in a group with Panda Man Pete. People were asking him, uh, can you fight her, uh, fight Ebony Maw with ghost? And his answer, it's not worth it. You can, but it's not worth it. So remember I mentioned the play style where you cycle special threes? And remember that I told you that Ghost does not crit outside of her abilities. So with Ebony Maw, if you have a guaranteed crit, it's going to guarantee miss him. So phase and one hit combos will not work against Ebony Maw. So this is one of the situations where you want to use that play style where you're doing multi hit combos, not the one hit combos, because that's not going to work. You're not going to beat him. Do the multi-hit combos, you'll get a lot of attacks in that are not crits, so they will hit him. Build up to not a special two, build up to your special three, and build up your cruelties in the meantime, and that will help you out a ton fighting Ebony Maw. Now, you can use your specials, but they cannot be guaranteed crit, so you cannot have that precision buff up. So that means no phasing and firing your specials. So the best way to fight Ebony Maw, in my opinion, is to do the multi-hit combos and cycle special threes. Okay, that is the best way I have found to fight Ebony Maw. Next up, we've got Korg. Korg is another one of those difficult defenders that most people have figured out by now. Uh, you can defeat Korg with anyone if you master the light intercept method, which I have not. Uh, Ghost makes it very easy, though, because you can phase, and when he attacks, instead of attacking with a medium attack, which you normally would, 
you would attack with your light and do multi-hit combos to get his rock charges down quickly. So another situation where you want to use a multi-hit combo. Now you can fight him uh, not using multi-hit combos, but that's the most effective way I have found for me, okay? Once he has the uh, rock shield down, then it's business as usual. You can do your one hit, two hit combos, fire off your special two, and you're good. Next up, we've got Domino. Now, Domino is pretty straightforward to fight. The tricky thing about her with Ghost is that you need to phase and wait out her double medium attack before you counter with your attack. Uh, now, I found it safer to stick with one hit combos because even when she's lucky, she does not evade Ghost's medium attack. Remember, they're guaranteed crits and guaranteed crits will not be evaded. So sticking with a one hit combo is a safe bet. Next, Mr. Sinister. So anytime you crit against Mr. Sinister, he's going to heal most of it back. Now, most of it means your crits will still do damage to him that he doesn't heal up, but that's a long, miserable fight. So with Ghost, you want to adopt a similar style um, as you would with Ebony Maw. You want to cycle those special threes because special threes cannot crit. So all the damage from the special three will be applied to um, Mr. Sinister as well as Ebony Maw. But Mr. Sinister will not heal that damage. So build it up. Um, now with him, you don't have to do your multi-hit combos. You can fight normal ghost style. But it's going to be more of a miserable fight. Now I've talked to people who felt, and I felt this way early on, that you couldn't defeat Mr. Sinister with ghost. But a friend of mine, Maureen, shout out to Maureen, how you doing? Um, he went in against that Sinister in Map 6, or Act 6, rather. Not Map 6, but Act 6. And he fought and defeated one shot that Mr. Sinister there with Ghost. A lot of people said it couldn't be done, it couldn't be done. How can you do that? Well, that's how you do it. You stick to the special threes, and even though you're hitting them, and critting, and he's healing up, you're still doing a little bit of damage anyway. Uh, but with that one in Act 6, probably just want to stick to cycling special threes. And finally, we've got Vision Arcus. Now, when he first came out, we also saw a hard counter to Ghost. However, one-hit combos, that is what you want to do. Because Vision Arcus, if you stay too close to him, you're going to get an armor break on you. When Ghost is armor broken, she is almost useless. Okay, she can't phase when she is armor when she has an armor break on her, she can't phase. So, you want to avoid getting an armor break on you. That means there's champions like Silver Surfer um, that will put an armor break on you even when they don't touch you that are a nightmare for her to fight and just not recommended. You know, I don't recommend using Ghost against any of these champions, but if you find yourself having to face them, hopefully I've helped you out. Uh, Vision Arcus, you don't want to stay close to him, so the one-hit combos are perfect. It allows that timer uh, for the armor break to fall away. So unless you get trapped in the corner or get messed up in another way, one-hit combos will work with Ghost against Vision Arcus. All right, so that's going to do it, guys, for this video. I hope it helped you out. I hope you have found it useful. Again, it's not meant to be the end-all, be-all. These are just some of the uh, knowledge that I have acquired in playing Ghost. I'm not the best Ghost player. I still have things to learn. But this is what I have learned so far, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Feel free to leave comments. That's how I learn. Uh, if you have some other little tips. I don't have every single place where she could be used. The video would be hours long because Ghost is just that versatile. But I tried to include some fights that 
people might want to see that showcased a lot of the things that I was talking about. All right, so take care, share the video. If you know someone that might benefit from this video, feel free to share it with them. Uh, and you all have a blessed day.